Welcome to worship at St. Luke's, the second Sunday of Advent. As we did last week, and we will be throughout Advent, we will be celebrating with a poem right after our lighting of the candle. This week we light the second candle, the candle of love. Our poem is The Bat by Jane Kenyon. I was reading about rationalism, the kind of thing we do up north in early winter when the sun leaves work for the day at 4.15. Maybe the world is intelligible to the rational mind. And maybe we light the lamps at dusk for nothing. Then I heard wings overhead. The cats and I chased the bat in circles. Living room, kitchen, pantry, living room, kitchen. At every turn, it evaded us. Like the identity of the third person in the Trinity, the one who spoke through the prophets, the one who astounded Mary by suddenly coming near. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's children said loudly, Amen. Children, we no more. Hope is on the horizon. Weary 
This morning's reading comes from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 16. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before, whose two kings you are in dread, will be deserted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Matthew, the first chapter beginning at the 18th verse. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from the sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's children's message. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. Advent is a season that reminds us or invites us to wait. Now, I don't know about you, but I actually don't wait very well. And sometimes I get, I want to either fidget, like I have a fidget spinner on my desk just for moments where I don't have something to do, or maybe it's waiting in line for a coffee or for food, and maybe I can get a little impatient. That's a little bit of a different waiting than what we're talking about with Advent. We are reminded to wait in hope, to wait in love, to wait in peace, and to wait in joy. Today, we're going to talk about waiting and love. Now, it's probably not a secret. I love to talk about love. I love the fact that Jesus came to us strictly to love us, to help us share love with others. But what does it look like to wait in love? I think we all have moments in our lives where we are waiting for something. So this week, whatever it may be, if you are waiting for something, you're waiting in line, maybe you're waiting for mom and dad to take you to see Christmas lights or whatever it is, you can think about how can I show love right now? Jesus brings that to us every day. That is what we wait for in Advent, is that type of love. We have the gift of being able to give that to each other today, tomorrow, and every day. So let us wait in love together. Amen. I love this story in Matthew. It gives us just the small image that we have of Joseph. And as we go past Christmas, we'll hear more of the story about how they flee into Egypt, how he protects Mary and Jesus. The fact that Joseph wanted to dismiss her, in other words, send her away, shows how honorable he is. 
You see, he had the right by the law to take Mary to the village square and to announce to everybody that she was pregnant and it's not his child. And then she would be disgraced and most likely stoned. But Joseph, we read, being a righteous man, was unwilling to expose her to this, to this public disgrace. And he planned to dismiss her quietly. The engagement would be off. And he'd go on with his life. Find another wife. But Mary would still have her life. Now, once he had agreed to do this, had, had, had convinced himself to do this, in night, an angel came and appeared to him in a dream. You know, when I think of uh, appearing in dream, I think of another Joseph. Joseph, the son of Jacob, who has all these dreams and interprets all these dreams for other people. So this is a holy dream that Joseph has. And in the dream, an angel comes to him and says, take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. Now, Jesus is also the name Joshua in Hebrew. And so he will name the child Joshua. And when he names that child, even though it's not his child, when he names the child, that's a form of adoption. He has adopted this child. This is all unexpected. I mean, who, who would expect angels coming to visit a young couple, one in dreams and one in the middle of the night? Who would expect this to happen but God entering into creation in this way as a human is an unexpected event. It's an event filled with love. Unexpected things, things outside of convention can often be wonderful signs of God is at work amid our less than perfect picture of life. That God is with us even in our less than perfect picture of Christmas. Our Christmas trees are not perfect as we want them to be. Our lives are not as perfect as we want them to be. And in this imperfection, in this young human couple and in you and me, God is doing something new. God is doing something full of love and grace. This Sunday is the Sunday of love and it's shown through the love that Joseph shows to Mary by not disgracing her, by not sending her away, but staying with her, even if this means he will be seen as inappropriate or unclean because his fiance is pregnant. God has saved Joseph from doing something that he may have regretted. God has intervened with love. And that's what we're called to do also. In the darkness of the world, we're to be a light. We're to follow the way of Christ. Just as God intervened with, with Joseph, we're to step into people's lives and save through love. I don't know if you've ever experienced it, but I've experienced ways that I have been saved by someone through love through loving intervention, stopping me from doing something that I would have regretted later. I don't know if you've had that experience. But this love that's shown to Joseph, stopping him and having him take a different path, this love of God, this love we can show to one another. This love was shown to me by a number of people. Shown to me by family members who helped turn me from a way that was self-harming and hurtful shown to me by other leaders and showing me how I can be a pastor, intervening in what might have been a mistake. How many times has the wisdom or love of someone else intervened in your life, made a change in your life? 
that, that intervention, that, that wisdom, that loving intervention, that's how I like to think of salvation. That I see God as changing me from doing behaviors I would regret through love. That my salvation isn't because I have decided to follow Jesus. My salvation comes because God has intervened in my life in a loving manner and taken me from a path that may not have been a healthy or safe path. That God has intervened so many times in my life, helping me in decisions. Think about the times God has intervened in your life, maybe through another person, maybe through just a dream. That God has called you to see something in a new way, to do something in a new way, to respond with love and grace to a hurt, to behave differently than maybe you would have expected. You see, love is God's attribute. Paul says, and John says, that God is love. That defines who God is. That defines who the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is, is love. And it's this love that comes into our lives and changes us so that we can change others. We can actually be instruments that God uses to bring love into other people's lives. Just as God used Joseph and Mary, God uses us. When have you had an opportunity to show love to another, to help them to see the world in a different way? When has someone had an opportunity to show love to you, to help you see the world in a different way? See, that's what we're called to do. It's so easy to respond in anger or spite. It's so easy to respond thinking that we are right. But God calls on us to look at a different path, a path of love, a path of putting the other first, a path of not worrying what others may think, but you're going to do this for the sake of another. And it's not always an easy path. This love that is God is seen in the small steps that God calls us to, the little changes in our lives and the little changes that we bring to other people's lives. As we journey with Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem, as we journey to that first Christmas, Mary and Joseph did not know where God would take them. All they knew was that something wonderful had been promised and that they had been back, they had been called into following. So the text calls us to follow, to rise and follow God's call. Like Mary and Joseph, we don't know where we're going to end up. We don't know where the journey will take us. Eventually, this journey that will take them to Bethlehem will take them to Egypt to flee Herod's wrath against the newborn child, against the little boy. We don't know where God's call will bring us to. We're called to rise and follow God, to journey that will take us on a path that God has set before us. We may not know where we're going, but we know that we're traveling with God who is love. And so we're traveling in love. On this Sunday of Advent, as we wait, this is our time of waiting in love. How can I show love to my neighbor? How can I reflect the light of Christ, the light of love to my neighbor? I love this image of a window with a heart and love on it. To me, that's kind of the image of us being changed. This window is a little dirty, but the heart shines through. 
all the brokenness. And that's how God is with us. God's love shines through all of the brokenness. And we can reflect that light as we go out from here, out from our worship into a daily life guided by love. We may not know where we're going, but we know that the love of God, the God who is love, is with us. Amen. All earth is hopeful, the Savior comes at last. Furrows lie open for God's created task. This is labor of people who struggle to see how God's truth and justice set everybody free. People of Israel, you heard the prophet tell. A virgin mother will bear Emmanuel. She conceived God with us, our brother whose birth restores hope and courage to children of this earth. Mountains and valleys will have to be prepared. New highways opened, new her calls declared almost here God is nearing in beauty and grace all clear every gateway in haste come out in haste we first saw Jesus a baby in a crib this same Lord Jesus today has come to live in our world present in neighbors we see how Jesus is with us and ever sets us free Hello and welcome. We're so glad to have you with us here today. I have just a couple of quick Christmas related announcements for you. The first is that our annual children's Christmas program is coming up here on December 11th. It's going to be at the 11 o'clock worship service here at St. Luke's in the sanctuary and I invite you on out uh, for that uh, and come support our, our uh, kids here at St. Luke's. And then during and following the service, we are having a chili luncheon uh, just across the hall in in our friendship hall, uh, all of the proceeds of that luncheon are going to be benefiting Open Doors for Refugees, a local Madison organization here. Uh, so come on out. It's open to the public. The lunch will be open to the public from 11 until 1. Uh, come on out and support that great organization. And then next, our annual Music of Christmas is just around the corner. That's on December 18th. Uh, we want to invite you on out to the Middleton Performing Arts, Arts Center. That's at 9 and 1030 on the 18th. It's, it's going to be a beautiful morning uh, where we get to showcase all of the beautiful and wonderful musicians of St. Luke's here. Uh, so we would love to see you then. Last, uh, make, your, make your plans now for Christmas Eve at St. Luke's. We have services all, all afternoon long at 2, 3, 4, 5, not at 6 o'clock, but at 7, 8, and 9, uh, we will also have an online service here for you. Uh, so uh, join us for Christmas here at St. Luke's. We can't wait to see you. Uh, that's all of our announcements here this morning. As always, to stay connected with us throughout the week, you can fill out the Connect card in the links below. We are reminded that God's purpose for St. Luke's is to connect, serve, and grow in Christ's love. What better week than the week when we talk about waiting in love to talk a little bit more about our Heart to Heart Committee. This is the committee that is shepherding St. Luke's to and through the process of reconciling in Christ. And what that is, is a process that helps us as a congregation to widen our welcome to everyone, no matter their sexual orientation, their gender identity, their gender expression, and also to help us work for racial equity. 
The committee is putting out a survey as one of the first steps in this process. It doesn't take long, there's just a couple of questions, but we would really love to hear what you have to say. So if you would click on the link and fill out the survey today, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, you renew the church in every age. We give thanks for hymn writers and theologians. Inspire teachers, writers, and musicians to delight and instruct your people. You give us a vision of creation and harmony when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companions to its creatures. Restore to balance and wholeness what human greed has harmed. You defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders who will govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. You deliver those in need from suffering and from fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Provide safety and help to our neighbors without shelter, refugees, and those fleeing violence. You urge your people to welcome one another as you have welcomed us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in this and every congregation. We pray for people who are homebound, hospitalized, or separated from their loved ones. We pray for the people of St. Luke's. This week we lift for blessing Alejandro Martinez, Jessica Vesselman, and Sophia, Marilyn Mason, Sasha Mason and Gianna Mason, Andy Malbach and Kim Steven, Merritt and Greta, Bernie Malbach, Helen Malbach, and Lynn Malbach. You embrace all who have died trusting in your promises, and we give thanks for their faithful witness. Sustain us in hope until we are united with them in the joy of your eternal presence. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your Spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all of your children. It is in Jesus' name that we pray, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Today and always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hey, thank you for joining us. If you would like to support the ministries at St. Luke's, you can make an offering online at stlukes-elca.org backslash give. We want to offer a huge thank you to all for your continued support. If you're in the Middleton area and would like to join us in person, we gather every Sunday morning. And you can find our full worship schedule on the website as well. If you're just finding us for the first time, welcome. Let us know you're here by filling out the Connect card in the links below. Thank you for worshiping with us.